And we're live. It is Thursday. Can you believe that tomorrow is almost Friday? Like it was just Monday. I don't know how the week always goes so fast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Alexandra. I'm founder of Life with Herpes. I'm excited to be here with you. I have been talking about herpes publicly since 2017. So I've been talking about this for a really, really long time. I have been diagnosed with herpes starting in, well, my first diagnosis was in 2003 when I was diagnosed with HSV-1, and then again in 2011 when I was diagnosed with HSV-2. So I've been living with herpes for almost two decades, like coming up on it soon. And I, I'm just here to be an advocate for you all to get the information out. Um, I know when you're first diagnosed with herpes, it's devastating, it's tragic, it's um, life altering. It doesn't have to be. Um, there are things that do impact your life, but there are ways to get through it. So my point is, this is your opportunity here to go live with me, to ask your questions, to um, ask things about what it's like being diagnosed. How do you know what a herpes outbreak is? What's the difference between type one and type two? Um, outbreak prevention, how to prevent transmission to a partner, all sorts of wonderful things like that. Um, so ask your questions here. I will get through them. The last couple lives, I have not been able to get through them. I have left with, I've unfortunately had like 100, 200 questions I wasn't able to get through. So definitely ask your questions. Um, can I give you a shout out to your, can you shout out my friend Cameron? It's his birthday today. Yes. Happy birthday, Cameron. Um, and for those of you that have any friends that need to hear this, please share this with them. Again, this is, I'm here to educate. I'm here to create a community that, of, of people so we don't feel ostracized, we don't feel um, alone like we're on an island because that is exactly what it feels like when you're diagnosed with herpes. Like I said, ask your questions here. Hi there. You mentioned the two vitamins you can use to lower risk of transmission. What brands do you use? Um, and Jack, I'm educating people on herpes, like the virus, the STD, the STI, herpes. Um, what brands do I use? I use what is now Palmera Health, and it was formerly Natural Cure Labs. You can see here I have one that is Natural Cure Labs, and I have one here that's Palmera Health. It's the same company. They just changed their name. Um, why I like them is because I like their manufacturing standards. They have won awards for the manufacturing standards. They are made in the United States, um, and they use the highest quality and efficacy and have the efficacy of in ingredients and things of that matter. I don't know if I used the word correctly. Efficacy of ingredients, I don't know if I said that correctly, but you know what I mean. They um, have laboratory tests, um, so anyways, I think they're the best. And I have it linked for you in the bio, you do get 10% off. Um, do they ship to Canada? I believe they do. I do believe they ship to Canada. So um, I like the lysine, oops, lysine and monolaurin. I take them daily. Um, and the monolaurin helps specifically with my immune system. The higher our immune system or the more robust our immune system is, the less likely we are to get herpes outbreaks. Um, and so we are gonna be naturally keeping it dormant in our body. And then the lysine is a protein that the herpes virus hates. The herpes virus hates this virus, or this virus, this protein, because it prevents the replication of the virus. So when the virus can't replicate, that is when it is dormant. So if it's not replicating, it's not procreating, it's not, it's not creating outbreaks. So it hates this, it basically suffocates it internally. Um, just to be cure, uh, I've been all over with my words today. Just to make sure we all know there is no cure for herpes um, at this point. There, the CDC was speaking today on herpes, on the HSV virus, but there is no cure. There are people out there trying to find a cure and trying to hire researchers and things of that matter to find a cure. But right now there are no cures. How am I? I am great. Um, thank you for asking. Doesn't pretty much everyone have some form of dormant hair herpes? Absolutely, Jack. Everybody has herpes. There's hundreds of types of herpes viruses. The ones when I'm specifically talking about is, is oral herpes, like AKA cold sores or genital herpes, but everybody pretty much has a herpes virus. Um, but with that being said, two out of three people have HSV-1, which is commonly associated with oral herpes, and one out of six uh, have HSV-2, which is commonly associated with genital herpes. So there's a lot of people living with herpes, um, that equals to about 80% of the population living with herpes. Um, 
is there a dating site for people having herpes? There is, there's a couple of them. I was a spokesperson for them um, when I first started. Um, yes, there absolutely are dating sites for this. If you are in the position of, you don't feel comfortable disclosing to people about herpes status, or you are terrified to transmit it to someone, then that might be your right um, way to go. But with that being said, I personally don't think we should have to uh, put ourselves in a, a bubble or a box that says, I have to date you now because you have herpes and I have herpes. If it happens to work out that way, great, but don't feel like you have to. It definitely plays into the stigma of, wow, herpes is so bad and so wrong. Um, so it, it's, it's not, it's so common and it's just a matter of, um, communicating with the partner and accepting it yourself first. Mia, you're saying um, India has a $50 pill to fix that. Um, I'm not sure about that. I'm, I'm sure there are people or people that have some sort of herbal remedy. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a cure and we can't say that it's a cure at this point. Um, we'd have to go along with the FDA guidelines and the CDC and things like that. I have zero doubt there are um, herbs and, and remedies out there to help our immune systems with it, to help kind of suppress the virus, to help kind of lower the viral load in our body. Um, but as far as a cure, there is no cure at this point. With that being said, I am not a doctor. I can't recommend prescribe or anything like that. So I'm not a doctor. Um, keep that in mind. If you do have medical questions specifically, go to your doctors, ask your doctors. Um, do I ever think there will be a cure? Absolutely. We're too far technology technologically advanced and medically advanced not to have an answer um, or some sort of a more than just a antiviral um, and the question you know is there going to be a cure or is there going to be a preventative matter uh, in place those are two different things so um, I, I believe there will be something at some at some point can I show you guys the pills yeah these are um, supplements they're not prescribed um, and again I'm a doctor I'm not a doctor so I can't prescribe them but these are supplements that I take they are from natural care labs aka Palmera health and I take monolaurin and lysine daily to help boost my immune system and um, help prevent the replication of the herpes virus and it is linked for you um, you're a pharmacist, Tracy, and there's many things in the pipeline that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. See, there, there's no way that there's not gonna be something coming out. We just don't know what it is. Um, did you have your children naturally? So I did have a vaginal birth with my son. Um, many, many, many mommies do. I mean, that's a concern that a lot of people have when they're first diagnosed. And it's just really important to get on the same page with your doctor and understand what, um, what your choices are, what your consequences are, what your risks are, and how you want to proceed. The virus can go so low, it can almost be undetectable, but cannot be cured. Yeah, I think that's kind of what people are thinking. Like, I don't know that much about hepatitis, but hepatitis is, you know, you never get rid of it, but it can go undetectable in your system. And so I think that they're looking probably towards something like that for the HSV virus, but I don't know, you know, like they didn't just like call me up and let me know, unfortunately. Again, if, if you, um, know anybody that is going through this or, or needs to hear this information, please share it with them. And so that way we can just continue to get this information out. And thank you for the hearts, you guys. I really appreciate all the little hearts. <laughs> um, how likely is it transferred without condom? So unbeknownst to what we are told or what we're educated on, um, condoms only protect you 30 to 50% of the time. So we are taught to say, oh, just use a condom and you'll be fine. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. Are condoms helpful? Absolutely. Should we be using condoms? 100%. But are they going to be the end all be all that protects us from herpes or any other STI for that matter? Um, I, I'm not an expert in other STIs, I'm just an expert in herpes. So herpes prevent transmission between 30 and 50% of the time. And the reason why boils down to a couple of things. One, your herpes outbreak may not be located in an area that the condom prevent or protects it. So it's skin to skin transmission. So if the condom is 
covering an area or going to prevent the skin to skin transmission of an area, then that's great. But there might be other locations that the person has herpes. For example, you can use me as an example. I get it on my tailbone. So we, I can use all the condoms I want. It's not necessarily going to protect that area. Right? So that's why condoms are not always effective. That's why people will say, well, I don't understand. I've always used a condom. How did I get this? The next way is condoms break. They break, they fall off, or we don't always use them the entire time. So we are also trained to think, oh, use a condom um, during sex. Great, 100%, like do not disagree with that. But what about during foreplay? What about after sex? It's still skin to skin. So just because you're not having sex, you can still transmit it. Um, so those are just some things to keep in mind. Do you have herpes type one or type two? I have both. Yay, I have oral HSV one and genital HSV two, so I have both. Thank you for the hearts, everybody. Can you still have kids? Absolutely. I'm a mommy. There's many, many, many mommies out there. Um, and there's different ways to do it. If you don't feel comfortable having a vaginal birth, which I can understand, then you can have a cesarean section. Um, if you feel comfortable like I did to have a vaginal birth, then you can have a vaginal birth. It's a matter of getting on the same page as your doctor. You have HSV2 and your kids are 100% clean. Yeah, I don't like to use the word clean because I feel like I'm clean. Actually, I didn't shower today, but I showered last night before bed. Um, and um, sorry, I was just reading it. Does someone put does herpes have a root in toilet seats? No, um, but but yeah, clean is just one of those words that we have associated with STDs. Like I'm clean, I'm not clean, um, and I think that's really unfortunate because a lot of times people don't even know what their STI status is. What, in your opinion, on the two vitamins helping lowering the risk, what's your opinion on the two vitamins helping lowering the risk of, so the supplements that I recommend, or I can't recommend, I'm not a doctor, but that I personally take are lysine and, and monolaurin. I think lysine has been essential in my helping prevent outbreaks. Um, if I feel tingles or I feel the prodrome symptoms, I immediately take the lysine and, and it helps um, lower those sensations and I feel that the mono Lauren has been really helpful with my gut health as well as with my immune system so I take them daily um, and I personally can't live without them so okay skin to skin transmission yes is the herpes virus it is skin to skin transmission thank you for speaking on this you're welcome Tracy I use a trash bag and it works fine good I hope you're joking um, what exactly is herpes? It's a virus that lives in our nervous system. Some people, a lot of people define it um, differently. Some people call it an STD. Some people call it um, a skin disease. Other people call it a, a neurological disease because it lives in our nerves um, and it pops up when we're stressed. So when we are, when we're stressed, when our adrenaline's going or when our nervous system is out of whack is typically when people get outbreaks. So that happens when our immune system's low because we're sick or when we're stressed so or in our fight or flight mode. When we're in that fight or flight mode is when we get most of our outbreaks. Um, you guys have to walk with me because my little boy, I'm gonna have to go in a minute. My little boy is we're going to the Home Depot today, you guys. We have an errand to run. Oh, he ran away, so I'll leave my door open. We can talk until he runs back. Oops. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna have to go in a few. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna have to go in a few. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna have to go in a few views. When are you contagious after an outbreak? So unfortunately, we're unaware of when we're when we are contagious. We're obviously contagious when we have an outbreak, like duh, obviously, right? But we also are contagious during the viral shedding, and unfortunately, there's no way at this point to know when the virus is shedding. Um, typically, it's asymptomatic, and that's why the majority of transmissions occur without an outbreak. Does my husband have HSV as well? He does not. Um, he does not have either HSV1 or HSV2. What's my favorite cheese? I love a really stinky, creamy cheese. Um, I also love goat, like any type of goat, not just like the goat cheese that we think of, but like uh, a hard goat cheese. I think goat milk, any, any type of goat is better than cow. So I love a good 
stinky cheese. That's a, I don't eat cheese that often though. Um, I have both one and two. Um, all right guys, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate you listening and I appreciate you asking questions because this is what's really important about our own health. This is here to um, create advocacy. It's here to create competence and confidence and allowing us to take control of our own sexual health. So again, thank you for joining me. I am going to go to get my little boy. We're going to go to the Home Depot. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to call my mom back. You all should call your moms if your mom's called. All right, guys, I appreciate you all. See you soon. Have a very, very happy Thursday and enjoy your TGIF tomorrow. All right, I'll talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Bye.